I've got in my hand here an invitation from Her Royal Highness Princess Bupa Devi from Cambodia to go to Phnom Penh and to interpret her late father King Norodom Sihanouk's favorite dessert. It is a petit gâteau de banane au beurre de cacahuète et au caramel, which is basically a small banana cake with peanut butter and caramel. Actually, desserts are right up my alley because when I started cooking, that's what I did first. So this is going to bring me back to the days of my youth. Be quite nice. I am Christian Bauer, executive chef and co-owner at Troika Sky Dining, one of Malaysia's most innovative fine dining restaurants. I wanted to have some fun with my European heritage and my love of world cuisine, so I came up with the idea of taking over the kitchens of royal families and reinventing traditional palace dining. My style of cooking is modern, but it always has a definite twist. Who doesn't love a challenge? Join me as I put my culinary skills to the test. Phnom Penh is one of the oldest cities in Asia, dating back 700 years. A French colony until 1953, it was charmingly called the Pearl of Asia. Instead of taking a taxi, I've grabbed one of these little tuk-tuks that should get me to my destination a lot faster. I love tuk-tuks. It looks very different from all the other places I've been to. A little bit more European, actually. I quickly freshen up at my hotel and hit the streets to explore some of the local delicacies. Cambodian or Khmer cuisine mirrors the country's lushness and draws on the abundance of fresh fish, fruit and vegetables. It is always fragrant but never excessively spicy. This Khmer noodle, Nam Ban Chok, can be found all over Cambodia. This balance of sweet, salty, savory and also spicy is something you have to get right. It is part of all Asian cuisine. It tastes excellent. Cambodia is a country with recent trauma. The cruel regime of the Khmer Rouge left literally no family untouched. The royal family, and especially legendary King Sihanouk, is credited with helping to rebuild the country. Today, the king continues to serve as a symbol of national unity. I'm on my way to the royal palace to have an audience with Her Royal Highness Princess Bupa Devi, the daughter of the late King Sihanouk and his first wife. What a building! Sometimes life throws you amazing opportunities and this is definitely one of them. In 1970, the royal family was forced into exile and only returned to Cambodia in 1993. In 2004, Sihanouk's son Sihamoni ascended to the throne as the new king. Princess Pupa Devi is Sihamoni's half-sister. I'm here at the royal palace, the ballet hall. Everyone over there is waiting for the princess to appear, and so am I. I'm getting quite nervous, actually. The princess is a former prima ballerina of Cambodia's world-famous royal ballet. Et quand est-ce que vous avez commencé à, à apprendre la danse Il faut apprendre très jeune, d'abord, pour avoir la souplesse, etc. Et ensuite, la basse, les gestes. On fait ça au moins à partir de, de 6 ans jusqu'à 12 ans, quand ce sera prêt, qu'on doit apprendre les répertoires, tous les répertoires. De... C'est vrai que la première fois que vous avez dansé pour un public, c'était quand C'est à quel âge 14-15 ans. Ouh. Vous étiez nerveuse Non. The author Denise Haywood has researched the history of the Royal Ballet of Cambodia extensively, including the role of the princess. She had a natural affinity for dance. She was very graceful, slender. She had an affinity for the movement, a feeling for the whole ritual. In fact, Princess Bupadevi was the greatest dancer of her generation. 
Le ballet royal, ça veut dire le, le ballet classique mmh. cambodgien. C'est la tradition, c'est le roi qui, qui s'occupe euh, mmh. personnellement de... Mmh. Ça fait partie de la famille royale, la salle de répétition, c'est surtout toujours dans l'ensemble du palais royal. By age 18, the princess became the shining star of ballet, dancing for heads of state from all over the world. In the early 90s, the princess returned to Cambodia. She made it her life's mission to resurrect the royal ballet after it had been nearly eradicated by the Khmer Rouge. 90% of the dancers were murdered by the Khmer Rouge. So many traditions were lost and then forgotten. And those survivors who returned to the city, it had been destroyed. Those survivors were starving, they were sick. But nevertheless, they helped to revive the classical traditions. And Princess Bopa Devi had a very important role to play in that. Alors dites-moi un petit, tout petit peu de, sur la, la cuisine cambodgienne. La cuisine royale du Cambodge, euh, c'est le palais royal aussi. Euh, ça appartient au, à la famille royale de, de, mm -hmm. de perpétuer euh, cette tradition. Et les plats cambodgiens, ça, ça fait pas grossir. Mm -hmm. tout, tout est frais, les légumes, les, euh, les poissons. Alors c'est très bon pour la santé. Pas beaucoup de grâce non plus. Est-ce que vous êtes bonne cuisinière? Pas du tout. <rire> Est-ce que ça a changé beaucoup, la cuisine, que vous vous rappelez de votre jeunesse jusqu'à maintenant Il y a des, des plats qui, qui disparaissent complètement. Maintenant, ça va revenir petit à petit. C'est une bonne chose. Bonne chose. Bon, merci. Je vous en prie. The princess has arranged for her cousin Prince Tesso, the Secretary of State, to take me on a tour of the royal palace. Built in the mid-19th century, the royal palace is a huge compound of buildings, structures and gardens that are very distinctive in their Khmer architectural style. That looks like a stage, doesn't it? Uh, absolutely. The king was an artist mm. and when he hosts reception before dinner, yeah. he always offered to the guest a dance performance mm. or sometimes theatre that he, that he personally... Oh, composed. I see. Then, Prince Tesso offers to show me the inside of the Silver Pagoda. Now this is really special, because cameras aren't usually allowed in there at all. This place is where the royal family pray with the king. Wow, that's quite an impressive room. Tell me something about this statue. It looks like gold, but is it really gold? Yes, absolutely, all in gold and more than 2,000 diamonds. Mm. Yes. So if I take it home, that would be a good holiday. <laughs> in 1965, Princess Norodom Rasmi Sobhana compiled the family's royal recipes into a book that is now sadly out of print. However, these recipes were eventually handed down by the family to the Raffles Le Royal Hotel for safekeeping. Here, I meet with head chef Wayan, a specialist on royal cuisine. So here we have what a traditional royal lunch would look like. Yeah, that's the royal Khmer okay. cuisine. Fantastic. Okay. What am I looking at? Yeah. This one is a crispy rice. That is intriguing. You know, if I make rice and I get it wrong and it sticks to the bottom, I'll, get, I'll end up with a, with a rice crust. Mmm. <laughs> mm. There's a certain amount of sweetness to it. Okay. Okay, don't tell me. I know what that one is. I'm off. Yes. Just where you get it My from? One and only. <laughs> so this is made with fish? Yeah, made of fish, made of chicken, of pork, or even you can have snail. Click, 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 my brain is clicking. I'm definitely going to make dessert this time around. This one, you cannot resist. Okay. Look at this. <laughs> it's made of banana and caramelized sugar, mm -hmm. and also you have the peanut butter inside. So is, is that a traditional dish? Or? No, this is the favorite of the king. Ooh! Favorite of the king. Put it on the list. Must do favorite of the king. I think I know exactly what I'm going to do. I will do the amok with the snail, if I can find snails in the market. This dish is the princess's favorite. Rice krispies, rice crackers, and a little pork dip and then some rolled pork in there. I can take these two and turn them into a really interesting starter. And then dessert, 
the king's favorite and absolute must. So those little cakes will have to do them. But I'm thinking of adding in the sago pudding because that's also got banana in it. So I'm gonna take these two and turn it into a nice, big, modern dessert plate. Let's see what the princess thinks of that. The royal palace is where the king lives and conducts traditional ceremony. But most of the state functions are actually carried out here at the Raffles Le Royal, hence its name. Before I go off to the local market for fresh ingredients, I am invited by Princess Sita, daughter of Princess Bubba Devi, to indulge in the hotel's illustrious history. This hotel, what place does it have in the history of Phnom Penh? The hotel was built in 1929 and it was uh, King Sisovat Monivo, who was the first one um, doing the farewell mm -hmm. and uh, doing the great opening of the hotel. There's one particular landmark visit mm -hmm. by somebody. Yeah, Jacqueline Kennedy. Jackie O. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that visit? She was invited with her husband, Jean Frederick Kennedy. Unfortunately, he got assassinated. So she made uh, the trip on her own, and my grandfather was very excited to have uh, Jacqueline Kennedy coming visit. You know, interestingly, I was looking at the pictures yes. downstairs, and you can actually see in King Norom Sianuk's face that he is excited. Oh, he was meet. seduced. He was completely seduced. He was so happy. If the president was there, maybe he would not be that charming. <laughs> which is a good memories for him mm -hmm. and even for the hotel. Yes. And this is why we have this the Femme Fatale hotel mm -hmm. at Elephant Bar, mm -hmm. which is named after Jacqueline Kennedy. Unfortunately, I have no time to sample any cocktails. It's time for me to get cracking for tomorrow's royal lunch. I'm here at the historic Central Market in the middle of Phnom Penh. Chef Wayan suggested I come here and explore the market. I really love Mon Pen's fresh and exotic produce on offer. I mean, you can eat it and use the shell for decoration afterwards. For the Bay Gedang Natang, the crispy rice cakes with minced meat, I will need tender pork to wrap up in leaves. How much is a pork loin? Five dollars, one kilo. Four dollars. I'm learning how to bargain. I'm probably paying too much, but it's very cheap. If I wrap something in here, they're almost transparent, these leaves, so that would make all the color that I put inside come through really nicely. For the amok, the traditional Cambodian curry, cooked with fish and steamed in banana leaf cups, I am replacing the fish with the snails I found in the market. Snails live and fresh. That is too interesting not to do. I want the king's favorite dessert, banana cakes with peanut butter and caramel, to be flawless and exquisite. So the last item on my list, I need to find the tastiest bananas in all of Phnom Penh. I'm gonna carry my bananas without a plastic bag, environmentally conscious. Well, I have everything I need, so I am off to the kitchen to start cooking. For the royal luncheon, I will be serving a modern take on the amok, the traditional Cambodian curry cooked with fish and steamed in banana leaf cups. But I am replacing the fish with snails and serving it French style in the shell. So let me start with the snail. The idea is actually to make the snail dish look exactly like a Cambodian snail amok, but then when they pull it out and when they eat it, it tastes like a French snail. So that's a little bit of a challenge here. There we go. And because we're talking about French snail, we want a lot of garlic. In fact, all these dishes are really simple to do. Cambodian food is about balance. It's not about enormous amounts of technique. Now all I need is the snails. So I'm gonna just quickly fry them here. There we are. I'm going to add my own secret ingredient, and that is pastis, an anise seed liqueur. Not too much. Ooh. Whew, that smells good. A bit more. There's never too much alcohol. And I'll stuff the snail back into its house. 
Along with the snails, I will serve a contemporary version of the traditional gdang natang, crispy rice cakes with pork wrapped in leaves. Now we're going to do a little dish that I've actually never tried myself. It's a pork wrapped in a beautiful, fragrant nori leaf. So we're going to wrap that in there. Normally, we just use this to serve it, but I'm going to actually fry it inside the leaf, make the fragrance go right into the pork. First of all, we need to marinate it. I've got the taste in my head, but is it going to be the same? First try, perfect. Oh, I'm a genius. It's gonna put our pork strips in there and let it sit for a while. Make sure it's covered. And that's one packet. Right, all we need to do now is fry our noni pork and we can plate it. And all the marinade will be nicely trapped inside there. It should be juicy, delicious. My modern interpretation of the late King Sihanouk's favorite banana cake with peanut butter and caramel is going to be a risky one. Instead of making a traditional cake, I'm going to serve a deconstructed dessert platter with salted caramel sago, a very modern peanut butter soil, fried banana, whipped banana cream, and homemade coconut marshmallows. This is a really exciting one. We're going to make marshmallows, gelatin. A little bit of water. Next step, I'm going to have to make a syrup. The egg white goes into here, and off we go. We'll add the gelatin. After that, we'll add our coconut. It goes in the frame and off into the chiller. Within a few hours, we'll have marshmallows. And this is our marshmallow. God of dieting, please forgive me. Got to get it into the chiller now. Inside the Raffles Le Royal, the hotel staff are setting the table while I put the finishing touches to my plating. Princess Pupa Devi, her daughter Princess Sita and Prince Tesso have invited a few guests, including Singapore's ambassador to Cambodia, Kevin Chok, and his wife. This is making me quite anxious. Will the royal family approve of my modern interpretation and bestow my dishes with their royal blessing? Well, it's showtime. So which one do you think you prefer? The yeah. traditional style or the new style? <laughs> this new style. <laughs> the taste is c'est authentic. Le goût c'est authentic. The starters have gone out. It seems to have gone down quite well. The princess is not an easy person to please, I gotta tell you. But she's smiling. But now, pièce de résistance, the dessert. I mean, to me, that really is the most important thing. If they like that, we're home free. If not, don't know what's gonna happen to my head. <laughs> Wow. On dirait presque un tableau là. Oui. On n'ose pas. On n'ose pas toucher. Je ne touche pas. C'est impossible de manger.
Tapioca and uh, banana. Tapioca. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The white probably thinks of peanuts. Peanut. Yeah. Et pourtant c'est Quand pourtant c'est cambodgien. Hein? Et ça, ça, et il a fait presque nouvelle cuisine. Là. Nouvelle. Chef. <laughs> Hello. Très bien, merci. Thank you. Thank you. La décoration entre. On a décidé, quand j'ai ouvert mon nouveau restaurant, de, de ne plus faire des desserts euh, comme un gâteau, et, un peu de sauce. Et, et trucs. Alors, on on s'est dit, on veut, on veut jouer un tout petit peu, comme, euh, comme on retourne à l'enfance. Mélanger tout et manger un peu de, de ceci, un peu de ceci. C'est tellement joli, personne ne voulait casser le tableau, personne ne voulait toucher le premier. Merci, c'est très gentil. Merci, Merci c'est très gentil. What a great experience and what a lovely family. My time here in Phnom Penh has been incredibly rewarding. Despite everything that the country has been through, the food, the culture, the royal traditions are very much alive. To the airport, please. Join me again next week when I travel to visit more of the world's royal families in Cooking for the Crown.